Everyone's talking about Tom Hardy quitting the Suicide Squad. Whoosh, with these guns, I'm ready to take his place. Actually, they're considering Jake Gyllenhaal. Damn you, Jake Gyllenhaal! Meanwhile, we're talking about Black Canary. Welcome to Meanwhile, the show that introduces you to the world of comics and connects it to the shows and games you already know and love. My name's Nathan Fadre. Let's get started. With Black Canary taking on a larger role in the popular TV show Arrow, we decided to take a closer look at what we like to call a BAMF. A badass mother- No! No, 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 sir. No, no. Black Canary has a strange and convoluted history that's been rebooted and changed several times. While DC Comics' newest universe-wide reboot, The New 52, has changed around her backstory, it's important to know the original history of the character so we can see how that history plays out in other forms of media, like the show Arrow and the Injustice Gods Among Us video game. The first Black Canary is Dinah Drake, and she is one of the first female superheroes, debuting in 1947 in Flash Comics number 86. Originally, she had no powers and was just a superb hand-to-hand -hand fighter. She worked with and eventually married Detective Larry Lance. After some marriage kind of stuff happens, they had a daughter that they named Dinah Laurel Lance. So Black Canary is Dinah? Yep, or Laurel, but ironically never Sarah Lance, like in the show Arrow. Sad Sarah. Laurel was also born with a genetic mutation, a canary cry as she calls it. When she screams, her voice is a destructive weapon. It kind of sounds like... <gasps> Not at all. As she grew, her mother saw to it that Laurel was trained in the family business so that she could one day take over for her. Since she grew up around the entire Justice Society of America, the first team of heroes from the 1940s, she was trained by some of the best, including learning hand-to-hand -hand combat from Ted Grant, the superhero known as Wildcat, who's also one of the guys who trained Batman. It's even suggested by Oracle that she could beat Batman in a fight. Can someone beat Batman in a fight? You know, even Batman has his limits. He Batman does not have his limits! There are no other Batman See, how can you argue with that kind of logic? She's also one of the founding members of the Justice League. She eventually goes on to lead the team, and working with the JLA is where she meets Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow. Ooh. Like, right? <laughs> At first, she's disgusted by this arrogant, hot-tempered hero, but eventually, well, let's just say, it gets complicated. They're on again, they're off again, and they even get married at one point, but it doesn't last long. Sounds like a lot of my relationships. Most of your relationships end in marriage? Oh, dear God, no. <laughs> the longest relationship that she has is with Oracle, the paralyzed Barbara Gordon, who forms the female team, the Birds of Prey. Oracle gathers the intelligence, and Canary acts as the operative in the field. With the new 52, Dinah is back to being the only Black Canary, a mysterious former Black Ops specialist who forms the new Birds of Prey, and we're slowly discovering her new shady history that includes working on the covert Team 7 with Amanda Waller, the head of the Suicide Squad, Deathstroke, and also her dead first husband, Kurt Lance. Well, he wasn't dead at the time. I would hope not. Birds of Prey, Volume 3, Of Like Minds, by Gail Simone and Ed Bennis. After the birds show leniency and let a white-collar criminal go, they catch the attention of his boss, a new, more powerful villain known as Savant, an information broker who has the tech skills of Oracle and the fighting skills of Canary. This story is less about the villain and more about the character serving as a great jumping-on point. Simone is one of the pioneering women writers in comics and also a real master of the form. Her dialogue is fast-paced with a lot of banter, but it really serves each one of the characters. Black Canary in particular, as her adventurous, devil-may-care attitude really shines. This is definitely a great place to start with the character. Birds are- Taco Bell. Birds of Prey, Volume 1 of the New 52, Trouble in Mind, by Dwayne Straczynski and Jesus Saez. This is the perfect intro to the rebooted Black Canary. Fundamentally, she retains her character's voice, even if her costume loses the trademark fishnet stockings. Straczynski creates a fast-paced intro as the new team tries to remain covert while a reporter is tracking down their every move. Plus, they have to deal with a team of chameleon-like assassins running rampant in Gotham. Canary has to get the group of heroes to gel as a team, including adding the supervillain Poison Ivy, which ends up being a great example of Canary's badass leadership skills. The hardcover graphic novel Black Canary and Zatanna, Bloodspell, came out a few months ago, and it's a great standalone story from Paul Dini. He's the creator of Batman the Animated Series and Harley Quinn. Harley. While the Birds of Prey series was canceled in August, the collection of the final art came out in January 2015, and there's enough there to keep you busy for a while with the back issues of the series till the next round comes along. 
Coming in March, we'll get a modern telling of her origin in Secret Origins number 11, and during the mega event Convergence in April, we'll see where she ends up with another reboot. Now that you're up to speed with Black Canary, make sure to subscribe so you'll know every Thursday when a new episode comes out, and feel free to add any story suggestions that you love in the comments section below. Meanwhile, wanna see my fishnets? Chris, turn the camera off! I'm sorry! I didn't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, The Purple Man is probably gonna be on the Jessica Jones TV series, so you should check out the fan film we made. There is no Purple Man! I'm not purple. <laughs>